All right, so we're going to continue on with polynomial functions. Now we're going to talk about polynomial functions of higher degrees. We talked about the quadratic um, functions in the previous videos. We're now going to talk about higher degree polynomials, so things like x cubed, x to the fourth, so on. Well, let's first talk about some things, um, some properties about the graphs of polynomial functions. And maybe before we get too far into the graphs, let's just even write a general form of a polynomial equation up here. We had this in a previous video, but let's just make sure we still all know what it is. It's a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a 2 x squared plus a1 x plus a0. And remember here, these a n's are just real numbers with the exception that a n can't be 0 and that n are non-negative integers. Um, so n is also, remember, the degree of the polynomial. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the graphs. Well, first off, polynomials have continuous graphs. Or, I don't know why it keeps freezing on me there periodically, polynomials have continuous graphs. Or another way to think about this is polynomials are continuous. Now, there is something that's uh, very important about continuity. Continuity is something that we'll be discussed in more detail in a later course, um, and there's some very important results from continuity. Maybe we'll talk about one of the results here um, later on. So what do we mean by continuous graph? Well, pretty straightforward here. I won't bring up a very sophisticated, I'll just draw in an x and y axis here. or two graphs, again, not being too concerned about accuracy at this point. So I'm going to draw two curves here. So this is an example of a polynomial. You're like, well, how do I know it's a polynomial? Um, well, this is just showing a polynomial with continuous graphs here. I'm not saying, well, I know it's a polynomial by looking at it. I'm telling you this is a polynomial, and so the graph is nice and continuous. But then if we look at something, for instance, like this here, this is not a polynomial. We know that for certain because it is not continuous. In other words, it's got to jump. We can see right here, again, think about it as a function is continuous um, if you can essentially trace it without lifting up your marker or your pen. So I'm going to go back to this one and kind of trace it. See, I'm highlighting this, and I want to highlight the whole thing, and I don't want to lift up my pen at all. And I can do that. But we can clearly see here, if I want to highlight this one, I can highlight up to this point, but wait, I have to pick up and then go down here to highlight the rest. So that's not continuous. It's got what's called a jump discontinuity in it. So this right-hand graph could not be a polynomial. So polynomials are always going to be things that you can trace over without ever having to lift up your pen or pencil. OK. What's another thing about graphs of polynomials? Polynomials. have smooth rounded turns. Sometimes polynomials, sometimes we refer to this as polynomials 
are smooth functions. Now there is a, a much more technical definition of what it means to be a smooth function, but at this point it's one of those where we really can't talk about that more technical definition because we don't have enough tools, um, mainly we don't have some calculus uh, involved with it to get the definition of smooth functions. But for our point of view, we don't necessarily need those technicalities. We can just know that looking at it, it's got smooth rounded corners. So no sharp turns, no sharp corners. So let's just look at a couple examples again here. So if we have two sketches here, I'm going to sketch something that's smooth and is polynomial, and then something that's not. So, again, if we want to think of, about something, now this has got several turns, but they're smooth rounding. There's no sharp points at those turns. Now, if we want to look at another one here, we could have. And let's go ahead and put one more. Come on. Thing is not wanting to cooperate right now. There we go. And so this one's not as easy to see, but I was trying to draw a horizontal line here. This right here is actually not a smooth round turn. It's a sharp turn and then here is another sharp turn and then here is another sharp turn so this is not smooth this is not a polynomial okay and then let's talk about here the some of the base um, graphs again of polynomials so I will bring up the graph paper here for these so we have two special case ones um, that I would say. We have, of course, the one that we've seen before, which it's not that it's one that would come up a lot, but we have where it's uh, a constant function. Except this kind of got a little off there. So this would be f of x equals c. It's one of our parent functions. And then we can also have f at x equals x, it's a parent function as well, roughly. And so any polynomials that are just their highest degree here, so this is a degree 0, and this is a degree one polynomial. They're all going to look like this. They might be shifted, they might, you know, in this case this is a positive slope, it might have a negative slope, but they're all going to be either sh horizontal straight line or a straight line like this. Now when we get into the higher degree polynomials, well we already know the quadratic one, but there's other ones here with quadratics, and so we're going to, I'm going to kind of exaggerate, this is not going to be to scale, so I want to emphasize that first. This is not a two scale graph at all. Um, but we're going to see here, um, I'm actually going to make these points 1, 1, negative 1. And so we know that x squared, and I'm going to erase this a little bit here, make this a little bit more wider going out. Okay, so this is x squared. And we, we spent several videos talking about that. Well, now let's talk about, though, what the graph of x to the fourth looks like. And we did talk about this briefly. So if we talk about x to the fourth, it's still going to go through these two points. It's going to go up faster. And it's going to be a little bit flatter at the bottom here. So this would be like x to the fourth. Then if we want to do x to the sixth, well it's going to still, it's going to be a little bit sharper and then again 
a little bit flatter and go up like this. This would be, for instance, x to the sixth. Now, the key thing here is these are all higher degree terms, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, but they're all even. All even polynomials are going to be similar to this, so they all kind of have a parabola-like shape. It's just a matter of how flat are they at the bottom. The higher the degree of the exponent here, if it's even, the flatter you're going to be at the bottom here, and also the faster you are going to grow right as we get to 1. So that's where you can see this is x squared again, this is x to the fourth, and this would be x to the sixth. And I said they're not to scale, but it's indica indicating um, the general behavior. Okay, so with that, then let's look at the odd degree ones. I don't need to scroll down. So again, this is not going to be to scale. So let's put a points here. So I'm not even showing very much. It almost looks like a straight line, but this is x cubed. Okay, so let me let me resketch this a little bit here just to give it a little bit more curveness to it. Okay, so x cubed. Well then we could have again odd x to the fifth is going to be similar to what happened with the x squared. We're going to be flatter in these regions and then it's going to get bigger much faster. And then we have one more that we'll look at. Again this is x to the fifth. And then we have x to the seventh, which if we did x to the seventh, again, it's just going to be even. Uh, let me resketch that. It's going to be even flatter and go up even faster. Now, that's not quite accurate as far as my graph goes, but again, we're just trying to get rough sketches here to illustrate what's going on here. And so the point of doing these is that the graphs all have similar shapes here um, as far as the degrees here. Now, when we get to sketching these, sketching these can be quite challenging. Okay, so now we're going to continue on talking about um, these graphs and their properties. We will get to sketching these graphs as well. Um, but we are going to talk about uh, just kind of uh, getting some of these properties down. And I, I haven't decided if I'm going to split this into a couple of videos, so we might have to see here. It's, it's going to be long enough to be a couple of videos, so I think we'll just maybe talk about some of the tests here, and then in the next video we'll, we'll do the graphing, and then the one application of the continuity here. Okay, so let's talk about then the leading coefficient test. And the idea behind this is we know, for instance, um, that these polynomials go to infinity and negative infinity. And I'll just sc scroll back up here. If they were even, they both went up to infinity here. If they were odd, one went up to infinity and one went down to negative infinity. Now, the lead coefficient test really will to tell us what the end behavior is. It's like, does it go to positive infinity, does it go to negative infinity, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have here is let f at x be a polynomial of degree n.
the end behavior And what we write is x goes to infinity. This would be x going to infinity is determined by a n x to the n. So it doesn't even matter what is going on in between or if there's any other terms in it. It only matters what the lead term is doing. Now, because it's determined by a n x to the n, when we looked up at these graphs here, it matters whether it's even or odd, and then also it matters whether it's a positive or negative. So let's look at here, first let's look at n being odd. And then a sub n is greater than zero. So what I like to think of this is, is that I just like to think of an example. n is odd, a n is greater than zero. So the easy example I can think of is x cubed. And so if I keep that in my head, I can see that as x goes to infinity, f at x goes to infinity, and then as x goes to negative infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity. And I'll sketch a graph here to illustrate it, but this is for, you know, x cubed, you know, 5x to the seventh, you know, any odd exponent there is going to give us this end behavior as long as a n is greater than zero. And again, if we want to think about the sketch, I'm not even going to draw a graph here. We know that x cubed looks something like this, right? So as x goes to infinity, this direction, f at x is going to infinity. And then as I go to negative infinity, I'm going to, f at x is going to negative infinity. Now, what we have here is we have another case, n odd, but then this time a n is not going to be greater than zero, it's going to be less than zero. Now I don't have to worry about the case where a n is zero, because that's not allowed. And so what we have here is, well, we would have as x goes to infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, f at x goes to positive infinity. And again, how do you keep this straight? Well, just think of a graph of x cubed, and again, we're talking about end behavior. So all odds are going to behave the same way. Now, I drew a set of graphs there for some reason. I don't know why. This is going to look something like this. Because if you want to think about transformation, the negative is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. right? So it's going to reflect about, not the y-axis, the x-axis. It's going to reflect about the x-axis. And so since it's reflecting about the x-axis, what was negative becomes positive. Now, that's all well and good, but you know an easier way to remember this? If you do x cubed for an odd, just plug in a number. So 1,000. 1,000 cubed, that's a big positive number. You're going to go off to positive infinity. Negative 1,000. That's negative 1,000 cubed. It's going to be a negative number, so you're going off to negative infinity. Well, let's look at f at x equals negative x cubed. Negative x cubed. Well, as you put a big number in, like say 100, you would have negative 100 cubed, which is a negative number. All right, so that means it's going to go to negative infinity. If you put in negative 100 cubed, well, negative 100 cubed is a negative number. And implying another negative, you get positive. So you go off to positive infinity. All right, well then we have n being even. And we have two cases again for that. This one we kind of already know, because we talked about quadratic functions. a n being greater than zero, that means we know that this opens up. I don't even think about 
what it does. I know that if a n is greater than zero, it opens up. So that means, since I have the graph here, x goes to infinity, f at x goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity. Well, then we have n being even, and a n being less than zero. So, what do we have here? This would be the other way. And so, x goes to infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity. x goes to negative infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity. So I really just remember some of these graphs of these basic functions, and that tells me the end behavior. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. That will wrap this first video out, and then the next video we'll pick up where we've left off, and we'll finally get into some actual sketching. But we're just going to determine the end behavior. Um, so we're going to determine right-left behavior. of each function. So we have f at x is 1 fourth x cubed minus 2x. Now remember this lead coefficient test is the end behavior follows one-fourth x cubed, because it's the highest degree term. And here we have a n is equal to one-fourth, which is greater than zero. So again, I just keep these little sketches, and I, I'll even kind of sketch that off to the side here. So this means that uh, as x goes to infinity, f at x is going to go to infinity, and then as x goes to negative infinity, f at x is going to go to negative infinity. Because we're just keeping the idea of what x cubed looks like with a positive a n. And then let's look at one more. Let's wrap this up. So we have f at x equals negative 3.6 x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1. Now here, my lead term, the end behavior, follows negative 3.6 x to the fourth. And in this case, a n is negative 3.6, which is less than 0. Now n is even and a n is less than zero, so that means it's parabola-esque, and it opens down. So then I can say, well, just looking at that, I can see that as x goes to infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, f at x goes to negative infinity. Now, I want to emphasize on these two examples here. These right here, these things, these are not the graphs of the functions. Those are just graphs to help me determine end behavior. Um, and when you get good enough at this, sometimes you don't even need to draw those graphs here. You can kind of just picture them in your head. All right, so in the next video, we're going to talk about um, actually sketching some of these uh, functions here. And we'll first, before we get into the sketching, we'll be talking about the zeros, the x-intercepts, which really we already know how to do, but we're going to talk about them and one special property that has to deal with them.